Hello, today's video is on contrast stretching. Contrast stretching is simply image processing and image enhancement technique that attempts to improve the contrast in an image by stretching the range of intensity value it contains to span a desired range of values. Contrast is basically the difference between the uh, in difference uh, between the intensity of darker and brighter cells by brighter pixels so that is how we are going to actually code uh, today in our uh, in matlab so here we are going to actually examine this graph and then we can actually apply this uh, formula to uh, to our code so here you can see that um, these are the alpha, beta and gamma are the slope of these portions and we will actually find after finding these slopes we are going to actually multiply them with these values. So here r is our pixel value so if it is uh, from 0 to less than r minus uh, sorry r1 so this is our r1 so if it is among this range then we need to actually multiply the value with alpha that means this slope here and we have calculated this here by dividing w1 by r1 so this one this portion is our 0 to w1 and this portion is 0 to r1 so if we divide them then we get alpha and when the value of our pixel will be actually less uh, than r1 and greater than 0 then we will multiply this value with alpha and same goes to the other options if r is um, greater than or equal r1 and less than r2 then we are going to actually multiply our beta with this value and then just add them with w2 sorry w1 and same goes with the third one also and here the length is 256 so this range will be uh, from 0 to 255 so that is why we are writing l minus 1 l is 256 so here uh, if that happens then we are going to actually multiply gamma with r minus r2 plus w2 so that is how we can actually apply this formula in our code and then we are going to get our result so let's go to the code let's start the coding so we are going to read our image into a variable called img so we need to write im read So inside this function we need to just pass our image name but uh, the file does not exist because of this direction so we need to change it. Select dip folder and then this is ok. So the image is actually loading, loaded after this. So here we are going to turn our image into a grayscale image. For that we need to write a function called RGB to gray. Then we need to give the IMG function, sorry IMG variable inside this parenthesis. And then after this we can show both the image. So M show. If we write img, we are going to see a uh, see an RGB image, and if we write gray, we are going to see a gray scale image. Okay, so everything is working properly. We just need to write the uh, variable names now. After this, so we had four variables: w1, w2, and r1 and r2 which we had used in our um, equations for slope and we are just going to give these values w1 will be equal 50 and w2 150 you can actually change this value and you can see how the output looks like but for now let's start with this one r1 is 80 and r2 is 150 and L was actually 256 we needed to use L minus 1 in our equations but as we don't want to use L minus 1 every time so I'm going to directly use L equal 255 instead of 256 so we can directly use L and here A will be equal W1 divided by R1 this is actually our slope 
alpha beta and gamma i'm just going to represent them with a b and g so b is equal w2 minus w1 divided r2 minus r1 and the last portion's slope will be equal gamma and that will be l minus w2 divided by l minus r2 now we need to write our for loop but before that we need to actually know the size of our image that means the x and y planes value of our image z will be 1 because this is actually a grayscale image we are going to run this operation on our grayscale image so here size of gray now if we run this we can see the value 512 for both x and y so now let's uh, run our let's write our formula here and we also need to check the conditions before we actually write the formula so we need to use if else condition inside this for loop so for i will i from 1 to x and for j from 1 to y we can use x or y both because both the value are equal so after this we need to check the conditions we had our three conditions and because of that we actually need to uh, multiply or addition maybe add some values with the pixel of our image according to those conditions so let's write them first if gray of i comma j that means if the pixel value is less than or equal r1 then the value r will be equal gray of i comma j else if gray of ij is greater than r1 and gray of ij will be less than r2 less than or equal here r2 is 150 so i'm going to directly write it you can write r2 there is no problem you can directly write r1 and r2's value or you can write like this so that you, if you modify them you can see the change so after this if this happens then r value will be equal gray of i comma j and then we need to modify gray of i comma j will be equal beta into this was actually inside the formula beta into r minus r1 then bracket close then plus w1 else if both these conditions are not true then we need to write our third condition r will be equal Okay, this will be gray of i comma j not g our image name was gray and now we are going to modify the gray image again gray of i comma j and this will be with gamma 
this g represent the variable gamma gamma into r minus r2 plus w2 and this is the end of our if else loop and then we need to end our for loop too okay so we have completed this process and now we need to see how this looks like we can see the change by comparing both the image so let's subplot we are going to show our gray image which we have actually changed and we have saved the previous image inside a variable called r so we can name it as enhanced image and we can copy this and paste it after the gray image was taken or after this variable just before the for loop this is our original image and we are showing the gray image here before change and here you can see the difference between the original image and the enhanced image if you change the value of our variables you can see the change more clearly by modifying these values so let's change the value of r1 from 80 to 90 and run again and you can see again this uh, change is not very visible now if we change our w1 value to 20 now you can see the change more clearly in this value so we are going to keep it 80 and let's see again there you go you can see the changes that are actually happening by changing these values of these variables now you can see again the change here also and you can see that every time you change any of these uh, variables value then the change will be a bit different from the another one time the value of the darker portion will be more dark and one time sometimes the lighter portion will be more lighter So I'm going to keep it like this. So this is what we have done for our grayscale image. But if it was for our RGB image, then this will be there will be another plane for our uh, image wherever we have made a change. So let's make it. Uh, let's uh, make the code, write the code here also. So we need to just add some position here for our subplot. We are going to use one three position and then let's copy the for loop and we need to modify this code here so the size will be exactly same even if we use the grayscale or RGB so we just need to change the name of this image that was our IMG variable so we are going to use them here in all of this position we are going to write IMG So here we also need another channel before this started. So here we need to write for our third plane. So let's use k variable here. k from 1 to 3. Or you can use z that we have actually defined here. But the z will be actually 1. So we cannot use it as this was for our gray image. So we need to actually change it to 3 and then we need to use it inside our image and we need to end it one more time okay now let's uh, add our variable new variable k after this 
i and j variable okay so we just need to do this for all the image values here this is the only difference between the grayscale and rgb image operation there is no other difference now let's save them and we need to show this so let's copy this subplot portion and in the third position we are going to show our enhanced rgb image Now let's run the code after saving this. Okay, we can also uh, show our original RGB image. So let's do this. Let's uh, change the subplot to 2, 2 and position 1, 2, 3, 4. We need to show another times here. In the third position, uh, let's show IMG. The original. If we run again, you can see the image. Here you can see. The difference is clearly visible more in the enhanced rgb image and if you actually want to see it more clearly you can change these values again to see the difference here now you can see it more properly this uh, image is actually more has more red properties than the original one and if we go back to change all the values again you can see the change will be actually visible properly this time through the rgb image